Hey everyone, um, so in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, two videos of Meridian Frosts that I've watched. Um, the first one was five days ago, um, and the last one I think was just today. Um, and Meridian Frost, very good channel. Um, I put the link up down below, so go and sub, and I'll put up the links to the two videos that I'm sort of responding to, I guess. Um, and I'm going to like summarize them. If my summary is off the mark, then let me know. Uh, my summary of the first video would be basically it's addressing the Occupy movement broadly and like the entire kind of new like movement on uh, the kind of anti status quo movement in the US in general. Um, and attacking it for only starting to care now where it's affecting them whereas they didn't care uh, when there were so many people suffering for the many years before this um, which is obviously true um, and in the second video uh, Meridian Frost goes into um, a bit more about the Occupy movement and I guess what he sees as some of their kind of naive statements and their shallow interpretation um, of facts um, and the fact that they've only recently uh, come to be interested in governments doing bad things because it's affecting them somehow um, and possibly because it's a popular thing to do and because they're bored um, as he says in the video um, and I mean, first of all, I, I do share the general sentiment. I mean, it, it pisses me off, to be quite honest, that there is so much horrible stuff going on in the world, and yet people are very much not just willing to, like, dismiss it, but even willing when they're put on the spot to, um, to, sub to put out a position that it's not important to them and I mean you can look at like foreign aid for example I mean it, foreign aid is nothing but if you ask people what should we do with foreign aid it's usually oh decrease it nothing is not little enough and out of that nothing obviously most of it goes to weapons um, and terrible things and it's used as a means of stabilizing countries that are important or blackmailing countries in some cases um, so I mean that's just one of many examples uh, you can look at you know AIDS anti antiviral drugs uh, Bush was lauded for I think it was like a billion dollars or I think about a billion dollars of uh, AIDS drug spending that he moved to the US he was lauded for it because it was the biggest kind of spending anyone had like done almost ever um, and so yes kudos to him for that but of course it's pathetic when you look at the trillions of dollars that are in the budget and the enormous human suffering associated with AIDS and the enormous benefit that could be produced by these drugs which are relatively affordable um, not to mention all of the issues surrounding the the kind of the patent rights and that's that's one tiny little issue and then there's a billion other issues there's the Congo um, there is there's all of these conflicts there's all of this injustice there are all the things that the CIA has done to South America there is the governments that the US has deposed elsewhere there is this legacy of injustice of suffering that goes back I mean it goes back to some extent to the beginning of history I mean Caesar uh, genocided hundreds of thousands of Germanic peoples so it's not like it's a new issue um, but it's it's certainly more to me it's more disappointing now that we have the tools to know about it and now that I think officially these are things that should be concerning us because when you look at what we profess to believe in the Romans just didn't care and they would have told you so now we profess that these things are important but then when you dig down are we willing to do the slightest little bit no we're probably not as a society um so i i definitely share the frustration 
Um, but to me, to attack, I guess, the Occupy movement or this kind of budding protest movement in the US as a response, I mean, to me, it just seems misguided. It seems like that should be something that should be embraced. Yes, it is frustrating that uh, usually it's when people are directly affected that they step into action. But in a way, it's natural. It's natural, especially in a system where people are explicitly not exposed to these facts in a way that would make them act. And it's not in the interest of governments to expose them to real understanding. So people are trapped in their own world where they don't get that kind of understanding. They don't emp empathize with people elsewhere and they can just delineate completely between themselves and the horrible suffering that's in other places. Uh, th that's what I think happens and what I think happens but I think the only way to access experiences like that is, is in some way to be able to put them into like a into a framework where you um, look at it from your own eyes and your own perspective and you consider how would it be if I were in that situation and in a way that's I think what this could lead to people are struggling yes they're not struggling in the way that people are struggling in other parts of the world but they're struggling and that kind of struggle could be a way in which they would identify with other people that are suffering and that might be a way in which we could actually open up these broader issues and p make people concerned about them um, I mean I think that's definitely a great opportunity uh, and I think I think it's one it's it might be one of those floodgate scenarios where once people become aware that there is this bigger context that there is this larger world of injustice then people actually start doing things and of course initially people are going to have naive views about topics I mean people a lot of young people right now they're they're young a lot of them are fresh out of university some are fresh out of school of course they don't have the understanding of the situation when they're just approaching all of these topics um, and of course when you listen to it as someone who's thought about these topics for longer certain parts of their reasoning will seem naive when you get into a discussion with someone like that it might prove frustrating because they might have an approach which is in your view not productive or they might have an understanding which is very incomplete and which is missing huge important parts of the world and history but I think the fact that they're even out there talking about it the fact that it's in a way becoming part of popular culture to actually discuss these issues again seems to me to be a good thing um, and yes I mean it may be that certain people get into it because it's it's a selfish thing or maybe because it's a popular issue um, and then you know you could say well that that's not the right reason to get into it but they're being interested in it and that should be the point where you can say that's an opportunity um, to actually make something out of that situation and I think if things were to develop if there were to be more fertile ground for mass movements that fertile ground is always to some extent not going to be um, the people that have been thinking about these issues for countless decades and have been kind of following up and done all of their study to some extent a popular movement a groundswell would always be uh, to a large part comprised of people that have kind of joined recently um, because that's why it's a groundswell otherwise the thing would have been going on the whole time otherwise the problem would never have arisen in the first place if people had always been on that kind of level um, but especially in the initial stages that's what you're going to have um, whilst things are developing you're going to have this kind of mixed community in which a lot of people will be relative newcomers that may have skewed perspectives that may not yet understand other people's perspective on various things that may not understand yet 
um, that there are even other people worse off than them. Um, and I, I'll, I'll just try to get to my last little thing and then I'll call it a video. Um, and that, that is that it is very true that the injustice that a lot of people are complaining about isn't the biggest injustice. Um, when you compare it to people having tires put around them and set on fire and the ru melting rubber burning their bodies until they die or hands and arms chopped off for voting, these are insignificant issues it would seem. But the fact is that injustice, I think, is injustice. And to recognize injustice in one place is to develop like an antipathy towards it more generally. And I think it is important if one opposes injustice in general to oppose it in every specific scenario. So then if you're against this injustice, this great injustice, because you can see it's wrong, then you should be about the kind of injustice that a lot of people are suffering in the US. If it's a college graduate that cannot get a proper job and has to do with a very bad job um, and is socially kind of looked down upon because they couldn't get the job that they were sure they would, it's not the same level of injustice, but I do think it is an injustice. And I think it behooves people who are opposed to injustice to recognize that as well. And instead of then kind of um, uh, kind of being being upset that these people don't recognize that their injustice is perhaps comparatively not that significant, instead use it as like a, an opportunity to get a word in and to explain to them all of the other important issues that are out there and that are waiting to be tackled. Um, that this shouldn't just be a movement about um, about changing government uh, but it should be a movement about changing the world and then of course all of this is terribly idealistic and of course none of this is going to happen overnight or even in the next 10 years and it's not it's a project that's not going to be finished for a thousand years but there could be steps and they, there could be steps in the right direction and even if then we move back in the wrong direction we'll still have gone in the right direction so we'll be further along I think that occupy and movements like it, um, I think they're mainly the. I think they're a win for people that are concerned about injustice in the world, um, because of all of these opportunities that they give us um, to address these issues and to talk about these issues and to also get these issues perhaps even into the media. Because if people are discussing injustice in one sense, then it becomes a lot harder to ignore a lot of other injustice. Anyways, Church of SDFU. I'll see you guys all later.